All right, boys, now I picked up this X79 system from a guy who sold it um, for 280. And well, as you can see, it just has six gigs of RAM, which is kind of sad, but the PSU um, is a really good one. Uh, and it has like an i7, six core, 12 threaded, the 3940K, so it's pretty decent to buy. Now, what's the point? The point is that, as you can see, there is no CPU fan and the guy connected this fan over there and uh, not on the CPU fan side. So every time you boot it up, it asks for an F1 prompt and he, it's like, hey, CPU fan missing. Um, that's quite annoying. So I'm gonna be um, adding a fan. I have this 140 mil Corsair fan and some handy zip ties. So we're gonna do just that. And then of course, slap a GTX 1080 Ti in there. Since, you know, good. All right, boys, now here we go. First thing, we want to actually prepare the fan. Um, so, you know, I'm just gonna place those zip ties all around it because um, you want to wrap up the um, heatsink pretty much. All right, all right. I'm trying this new filming way, by the way. I don't know if it's effective, so. I mean, give me a feedback, all right? <laughs> you two people watching this, give me a feedback. Um, it's pretty much always the same. When, I, when I'm when i zip tying stuff on CPU coolers, I basically um, draw a square of zip ties. And, you know, the square closes on the fan. As you can see, now I'm gonna show it to you properly in a sec. All right, now as you can see, the square of zip ties closes in on the fan. Now I'm just gonna, you know, close it properly. Okay, th th this wasn't properly, but hey, I'm stupid sometimes, all right? And now I'm just gonna put it over there, but I gotta do the same thing on this side first. All right, now this is the actual proper way. You want it to be exactly like this, not like this thing, all right? Don't judge me on this, but I can't be bothered doing it again, so it's gonna stay like that, all right? Now we just have to slot it in on the CPU cooler, let's go. Now I'm gonna just cut off those things and it's pretty much done. As you can see, it's pretty sturdy. It looks like it was made this way and it's also pretty cool aesthetically. Now I'm probably gonna remove the motherboard, the CPU, power supply, RAM um, from this case cause it's hideous, all right? And I can't put at an ATTI on this case which lacks both of the side panels. All right, now here we go. I removed the, the power supply. Now let me just remove the motherboard. And now, if you take a look closely, they're pretty dirty. So like Brian from Techie City would say, let's just give them some light Techie loving boys. Now, of course, we're not gonna be using this case for the build, but this is I'm watering PSUs, right? So we can't leave it dirty. It also has some fans, some cables in there. Oh, I believe there's also a PSU cable that was still there. So I'm gonna take that one out after it has dried up. All right, well, it's pretty quick to wash cases. By the way, the first case I washed, it looked something like this. So good, good vibes, you know? All right, that should be enough. Oh, there was also, the hard drive still inside, I don't know if you can see it, it's right here, so we're gonna see if that still works after the washing. Okay, now I did not intend to, but I ended up watering this hard drive, so I guess we're gonna try and see if it still works. Now this is a first for me, because I've never watered one before, so hey, uh, and I also watered up like five SATA cables, so we're gonna see if those works as well. Um, I'm going to be testing straight up with one of those SATA cables, so here we go. Okay, now here it is plugged in and everything, let's see if it actually works. Alright. Let's see if it's recognized in the BIOS. Here it is, boys. That's good. It's this one. Nice, now let me actually try and boot. Uh, now this one is a whole dr hard, hard drive and 
like I bought it in that PC, so I did not um, do the installation myself, and it's extremely slow. At least it was, maybe the water speeded up. <laughs> so hey, let's see if we manage to get a boot into Windows. We are, guys. Still working. Apparently, water did not damage it. That's because we dried it up properly. Now this time, I did not even use a heat gun. I just um, left it out on the sun. Now, you know, the sound it makes is normal. No weird sounds. So that's good. We have a 500 gigabyte working hard drive. The SATA cable is working as well. Now I'm gonna try the other SATA cables to see if they work as well, but they should. I mean, they're just cables. That's good, guys. So apparently, it's safe to water hard drives. All right, now here we go with the X79 build. We have a Tiny Ti Strix, X79 platform, nice PSU, new case. Let's get into building. All right, I opened up this Tiny Ti, just doing a quick repaste. And here we go, I still have this broken tube of thermal paste, all right, so don't mind it. And I am still doing the spreading method. Because it's consistent, easy, and I can film with the other hand while I'm doing it, even though I'm super slow if I'm filming, so sorry about the speed, but hey. Uh, of course, this stuff is non-capacitive, non-conductive, so, you, you know, even if it goes all over the GPU, it's going to be fine. Um, you don't want to do this if you have a conductive thermal paste, of course. And of course, you, you, you can leave a, like um, some portions not covered because it's going to uh, spread evenly once you apply the proper pressure. So don't worry about that. All right, here we go. Of course, it's not liquid metal, so you don't have to apply any on the other side. You can just slap it over. Now, let me put this guy here. I don't even have something to close it. I'm not gonna line it. All right, now we opened up the case. Now let me just grab the motherboard. I already have the CPU cooler because it's zip tied there. And yeah, just gotta slab it in. But hey man, don't forget about this guy because he was about to. So let me just slap the AO shield in and I really can't do it on camera. <laughs> so let me just slap it in and slap the motherboard in. And here we go with the GPU. Um, of course, I screwed in the motherboard. Don't ask me how many screws I put, all right? It's quite far from every one of them, all right? And I'm going to the left hand, it's difficult. <clears throat> okay, here it is. Nice. Now let me just put the PSU in there, mount the hard drives, a little bit of cable management, and we're done. All right, now we finished it. It was real quick, took at Took us like 20 minutes cable management and everything of course i still have to put the side panels on but that's like two minutes and here we go i like the statics this good old blue and yellow cables you know don't know why but i like it the case is pretty nice you know it was like 40 bucks the cable management behind is decent all right i don't really pay that much attention since i just cover it uh, but you know from the front it looks real clean you know can't see any cables and well, let me just put it up and see if it actually works. Of course, gotta turn on the PSU first. And let's see if we get a signal. Well, that was a ramp up. <laughs> uh, all right, then I'm gonna enable the lights on this guy later on. And here we go, we actually have a signal, so nice. It's working. Uh, let's get into, you know, actually installing Windows and overclocking. And here we go, the build is actually finished. Now I thought I'd peel off this thing live so here we go guys of course it's a little bit difficult with those screws on but hey here we go clean and done okay now i thought i'd make a tutorial on how to make a reflective side panel which is like a mirror because as you can see this guy reflects me but if there is a lot of light you can see through so i'm gonna just cut it on top of the tempered glass and then apply it on the computer all right now i just randomly apply it and as you can see it's not perfect i just roughly cut it um, and now i'm gonna use some duct tape to you know close the ends and then uh, i'm probably gonna push out those air up bubbles and that's gonna be it of course it's not gonna be like super clean i believe but it should be cool enough 
All right, now this is the first the first version of the model completed. As you can see, it's reflecting, you know, the floor. Um, but, you know, it's still not perfect. If we look at it from this angle, it's, it looks kind of ugly. And also, I don't have any kind of RGB inside the PC. Um, so I'm gonna add the RGB first, um, and then I'm gonna, you know, do it a little bit better, because this is just, you know, to try and see what it looked like. Ever wonder how do you attach a fan which is not LED compatible um, to your PSU if you don't if you, if you do not have this handy connector here? Well, quite simple. You just cut the 12 volt, then you cut the um, color which you want, and you just slot it in in your four pin or in your wallet. You just need a 12 volt and a ground. And guess what? If you turn it on, it works. And we also have an LED strip working. Okay, now here we are with the LED strip. Basically, as you can see here, we have a 12 volt, then we have the green, uh, etc. So, you know, you just take the 12 volt, you plug it uh, in the 12 volt, then you plug the other one to the ground, um, and it works. You know, in the case of the 8 pin, 12 volt is on top, ground is on the bottom, you just connect it and work in LED strip. Well, 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 here's the finished product. It's looking pretty nice, huh? Here's my hand. Now I turn it on and you can actually see the insides. Here's a better angle. As you can see, it's reflecting the test bench. Now I turn it on and we can actually see the graphics card and even the VRMs on top. I only had a single LED strip, so right? But if you do this on a PC which is full of RGB, it just looks great. All right, now this is our X79 Infinity Mirror system and it's featuring an i7 3940K GTX 90 Ti and this is our baseline, um, everything in stock, not that bad, I mean 27K graphics, 12K physics, 17K and a half total, not that bad. But now guys, time to overclock and this will change by quite a bit. We actually overclocked it, now the CPU is sitting at 4.4 gigahertz Unfortunately, we just have dual channel RAM because like, like the DDR3 RAM prices are really overpriced here right now so I paid like 50 bucks for 16 gigs which is really too much and I couldn't get 4 channel um, The GPU has plus 150 on the core and plus 500 on the memory which is great and well guys we ran a fire strike and as you can see max temp on the CPU is 62 degrees, 63 to be fair um, on the GPU we were at around 70 degrees and here we have 4.4 gigahertz as you can see and an impressive 30,000 <laughs> on the graphics score boys like this is really impressive like all the people that tells me like hey the 2080 super is so much better it's not and you cannot compare a 20 Ti to a 2070 alright and then look at the physics guys simply overall impressive that's good